let's talk optocouplers, also known as optical isolators, opto isolators. Um, so optocouplers are devices that couple optics. They have a, a, a LED, light emitting diode, and the light comes out into a, a phototransistor. So the light is coupled and it's coupled optically. And there's, when you build these things, they actually put in a sheet of uh, insulator. And uh, so there's, you know, maybe a 5,000, 10,000 volt separation between these two. So it's really nice to be able to separate high voltages. So um, in order to use these things, the way it works is you have to turn on the LED somehow. So let's build a real simple circuit here. We'll put in a 1K resistor in ground. And so if we put a voltage here, the current will go through the LED and turn the LED on. And then on the output, we're going to do this. We'll put a pull-up resistor here. We'll put in a 1K as well. And so you can see that if there's no light, then this transistor is off and we'll get a high voltage. And then when the light starts uh, falling on the transistor, the transistor will start turning on and the, and the voltage will go down. So uh, when there's no light, it's high. When there is light, it's low. Okay. So over here, if it's a high, then there's light. So high equals low, low equals high, right? So it's just the opposite. And a lot of times you'll see these used in digital, digital circuitry, you know, ones and zeros over here is ones and zeros over here. But in the uh, power supply series that I did, you saw that there was an optocoupler that was actually bringing an analog signal across. So, uh, so, so how does that work? So if you have some type of analog signal here, does the analog signal reproduce accurately over here? Is it, is it a linear device? Is it nonlinear? You know, how, how does that work? Uh, how do you get linear voltages over here to linear voltages over here? And so I thought we'd try that out. So what I have uh, set up right now is I have uh, I have 10 volts as our VCC, so we can make percentages easily if we need to. And 1K resistor, everything is real easy, right? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, as I'm going to bring into this side, I'm going to bring in a sawtooth wave, okay? And so what will happen is we'll turn the LED on and, and then we'll just start over again. We'll turn the LED on, so we'll have this linear ramp. And then we'll look at the output to see, you know, does, does, is it linear? What, will, it, will it do what it, what it does, okay? So let's take a look at uh, what I've got. So this is the uh, circuit over here. So the part that I'm using is a PC... Oh gosh, I want to get this number right for you guys. So the part number is a PC817, PC817. I don't know if that's a Toshiba part or, it's, it's a very common common part. And it's a, it's a tiny little part, it's, it's a four leaded part. Um, and if you're interested, uh, let's see here, this is pin, let's see, how is this thing wired? I think it goes one, two, three, four. I think that's the pin out. Okay, so I have it. Uh, I have it over here with all the associated resistors and stuff. Looking at the signal on the oscilloscope, so we have a um, we have a sawtooth wave in there now. All right, let me let me get rid of this wire here. It's just going to be in our way. Uh, so we have a sawtooth wave in there now, and so on channel two, we're going to take a look at the output. Um, so here's channel two. So channel two looks like this. Okay, so the first thing you notice is that uh, it's high. When this, goes, when this goes low, this is high. When this goes high, this is low. So that makes sense. But there's this funny flat spot here. So it's not, it doesn't seem to be usable in that range there. Well, that's because we're turning on an LED and an LED has a forward voltage. It doesn't output any light at all until you overcome that forward voltage, okay? And our sawtooth wave here is starting at zero volts. Now, if our star sawtooth wave started higher, the LED would right, be right on the edge of turning on and we would get rid of this. So let's do that. Um, I'm going to take the uh, function generator and I'm going to add an offset. Okay, so I'm going to be adding an offset to my... Does that make sense? I'm, I'm moving up this whole curve. I'm adding an offset, so I'm moving it all up to overcome that LED forward voltage. Okay, so I'm moving it up. 
Okay, so let's take a look at uh, let's take a look at some measurements. Um, we have channel one going from uh, uh, some low voltage to high voltage. Okay, we can measure that. We can turn on the um, let's see here. We can measure 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 on. So the um, Channel one is going from about one volts to five volts. Okay, one volt to five volts. Now, if we turn on channel two, channel two is going the opposite way, but it's also much, much bigger because it has gain of the transistor. So it's going from, um, it starts out here at 9.8 volts and goes down to zero volts, right? So it has a much, vol a much bigger voltage swing. So the input voltage swing was about four volts and the output swing is about 10 volts. So um, let me turn this off. Uh, measurement, measure, oh, oh, there we go. Yeah, so it's different scales. The uh, yellow scale is at two volts per division and uh, the, oh, they're both the same scale. They're both two volts, two volts per division. So you can see the gain there. So we have, uh, this is the input, it's only that big, and the output is that big. So uh, yeah, about uh, four volts in and about 10 volts out. There you go. Let's see if we can make this a little bigger. There we go. So I think you can see the linearity uh, pretty good in this picture. Um, it's not so bad. It really is not so bad, the transfer function uh, is actually quite linear, um, you know, for, for most purposes. Now, you're not going to make measurements, but in a feedback loop or some type of uh, transfer of uh, information, um, it seems to be pretty good. Okay, so I think you know how this works now. Uh, we had to apply a, uh, a DC offset to our signal. Okay, so this is our, uh, this is our offset. And that's to take care of the uh, forward voltage uh, forward voltage of the uh, of the LED, and we put in an offset of about uh, to keep this up at least a volt, uh, one volt away. So uh, once we did that, we found out we could get a pretty linear response on the other side. So let's go ahead and let's put a sine wave in it uh, in the in the in the uh, input, and we will DC reference the uh, sine wave up. Uh, so uh, it will not it will not be at ground. It will be wiggling up here around one volt or so. Um, and uh, let's set that up and take a look at it. All right, so I think that one, that picture makes sense. We have the input is yellow and we have the output is, uh, is blue. And we can uh, change the frequency. And I wonder how fast we can go though. So let's, uh, let's uh, keep increasing it. And then you can see that it, uh -oh, it starts to fall, fall apart. So let's see here. Let's see if we can, let's see if we can be scientific about this. So let's, let's bring it up here and let's adjust the amplitudes here. Let's make this bigger so we can see it better. And let's, um, let's change it so that we are right about right about there and so we are let me increase the amplitude just a little bit so i'm right there at uh there we go at these marks here so i'm at this this uh mark and this mark and so if we want to look at the 3 db point that's uh 6 db point in voltage uh that's when it's one half of its uh of its amplitude. So right now we're up, uh, let's see here, uh, one, two, three. So uh, at one and a half is where, uh, is where it will be half. So let's go here and I gotta watch just the blue ones. So that's too far. That's about one and a half, right about there. Um, so that's happening at about 80 kilohertz. So this thing has a bandwidth of about 80 kilohertz. Um, so not sending real fast signals this way, um, but uh, certainly uh, good enough for a lot of applications. Still looking like a nice sine wave.
So yeah, it's working pretty good. Let's see, right here, we're right here at uh, 80 kilohertz, and let's uh, let's put in a square wave. You can see the square wave is not representing a square wave on the output. If we uh, if we go back down to say uh, 10 kilohertz, here's here's 10 kilohertz, and we put in a square wave. Eh, that's not too bad. We have these uh, roundy parts of the of the uh, of the of the circuit, so. Uh, that would be on the falling, uh, on the rising edge. So this is, this is when we're uh, falling in voltage. This is when we turn on the LED. So when we turn on the LED, the transistor takes a while to turn on. That's this transistor turn on time. Okay, so that's some delay there. Let's put in a triangle wave. That's not, that's not too bad. Got a little bit rounded. But uh, yeah. Let's see when the square wave kind of uh, stops being a square wave. Well, <laughs> right about there, I guess. That's about 40, 40 kilohertz. Um, there we go. So that's the uh, frequency response of this thing. I'll say the uh, F is around 80 kilohertz. So if you're building a feedback loop, you would need to know something like this. You know, how quickly can you uh, how quickly can you settle on things if there's any ringing or undershoot, overshoot, that kind of thing. So this would probably be un, uh, critically dampened, but maybe too slow for your application. Um,